let's get started with our first question, which is, you know, one of the hardest things that we find with people in the industry is how do people get to know y'all? How does how does someone introduce themselves to you if if you've never met them, you don't know them, and you have no idea what their email is when an email comes through? So, what's the best way, and what are some great examples you've seen of uh, people who have introduced themselves to you? Uh, just I can I can start it. <laughs> That'd be great, Michelle. Um, a good example would be, um, in fact, um, Katie Dubow, who um, is the um, person who persuaded me to um, do this Google Hangout, which is the kind of thing that I never do and I always would say no to and usually not respond to the person's email. But Katie and I have a nice relationship because a year or so ago, out of the blue, she sent me emails saying that the, I think it was the National Association of Garden Designers was yeah. having a convention in San Francisco. Did I want to come and see some gardens? And that I, I think she may have sent the email just to Remodelista or to Gardenista to our general contact address. And I saw it right away because she was familiar with our website and she knew that was exactly the kind of story that we would do. Go visit. Um, gardens like that and take photos and I did for two days and we got like three or four posts out of it because they were terrific gardens and she made the whole process of my joining the tour and jumping off the tour and coming with a photographer in between the buses so there wouldn't be people in the gardens when we shot them like really seamless and perfect and so since then it's been kind of the start of a really good relationship where she pitches stories to me which are useful for her clients but also the exact kinds of stories that um, I would like to have on my website. And she knows that because she's very familiar with my website. And she reminds me of how familiar she is with my website all the time by um, <laughs> posting um, comments on the Gardenista Facebook page, for instance, like, and starting conversations there, which we really appreciate. So I would say, I mean, it's somebody who goes the extra mile and really takes the time to know exactly what to pitch. So she gets to know you in advance and then makes it very personal when she talks to you. Um, from my point of view, that's what happened. I don't know yeah. Katie, if that's how you would describe it too. It sounds Good. like she stalked you a little bit. <laughs> that's, that's okay if it's, if it's useful, effective stalking. Absolutely, I would agree. I think um, Garden Media Group does a fantastic job of getting to know who might be a good partner for their clients and goes about it in a very personal manner. Um, I would say, uh, just to share a tip of a pitch that I got, it wasn't necessarily something that was right for the gardening channel at Better Homes and Gardens, but the pitch came and it was, a, I think it was either a Vine video or just a short video showing how to use the product. So that spoke very quickly to uh, how great the product was and how I could see how it might benefit our readers. Um, so, and it was quite different, like, and in, in, frankly, I'm a, I'm a pictures book kind of gal, so if you send me pictures, I like that. I'm not, I don't like a big text in a pitch, and uh, so it got my attention really fast. So, okay, so David, what, what, how does someone introduce themselves to, to you? What have some, been some good ways you've found well, a cold, somebody that you've never met before has gotten your attention. Well, for me, it's 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 hard because uh, those of you who know me know I'm a bit of a hermit. Um, mm -hmm. So, the only place where I kind of am out and and meeting people is usually at the Garden Writers Association conference, and that's always a great place uh, for writers to come and pitch things to me okay. because I'm you know there and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for new writers, I'm looking for new relationships. Um, as far as getting me the rest of the year, it's really, you know, creative emails. I'm looking for writers who can quickly, you know, get to the to the grit of the story, the heart of it, and tell me why it's going to be of interest to the audience. Something simple, short and sweet, you know, doesn't have to have a lot of information for the first contact. The other thing I'd recommend is for people is to ask 
friends. If you don't know an editor, ask around, say, find a friend who knows them, and ask that friend to email and introduce them. That's a way that some new writers have come to me. But it's a great tip. So get an introduction from someone who has a mutual connection. So what about, does it? do you all use LinkedIn at all for um, making those LinkedIn connections? I, I have a LinkedIn account. Go ahead. I have a LinkedIn account, but I don't, I feel there's a weakness there in that many people don't know proper etiquette on how to connect on LinkedIn and, and give their pitches. Right. Yeah, I'd agree. I, I'm on LinkedIn as well, and um, I really haven't used it a lot for uh, article recruitment. I do uh, sometimes meet new people that way, but usually it takes meeting them outside of LinkedIn to, to get the connection all the way to a story. Okay. I, I would agree. I would say LinkedIn is not a very useful tool for me, at least in this context. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So now how important is the, uh, for someone totally cold that you don't uh, recognize their email address, how important is that subject line? For me, it, the subject line is important, but what's maybe second or maybe more important is their initial delivery to me. I can snip out a blanket pitch in an instant, and it doesn't feel like they really what Michelle was alluding to earlier, really know our brand and really are as interested in creating a partnership. So yeah, you're I'm delivering happy. your personal personality right up front and address my name. You knew my email address enough, so put my name in the header as well. In the subject and, line. I'm sorry, I should have said, say, dear Katie, or hello Katie, instead of just uh, no, not addressing me um, or just going right into your pitch. Um, it's just these little things that I pay attention to. Yeah, I totally agree that if it's personalized, I mean, I'd much rather get something that's personalized and pointed than something that's formal and really polished and comprehensive. Like, I would much rather get something like, hey, Michelle, we saw, I saw that you did this piece um, a week ago and thought that this might interest you as a follow-up. You know, something that shows, again, that you're thinking of me for this pitch because you know something about my site and you think that it might actually be content that would be useful to my readers. Right. So do a little research, find out what you've written on the topic before and reference that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah All right. I think it's key for whoever's pitching an article to really have read the magazine. That's the uh -huh. one thing that, that's, uh, I think, uh, first of all, I'll look and make sure they understand who our audience is understand the level of expertise we're looking for in the story and have a, a sense you know of the type of articles that we run because if none of those three are in there it's uh, it's not gonna stay very long so in um, in introducing uh, a new let's let's go to any other any other comments on that question on how you introduce yourselves for the first time Oh, oops, I'm trying to get my Boston Red Sox in. All right. See, I've got my little... So, I guess y'all can tell where my allegiance lies. So now, um, we do a lot of... A lot of people that are listening to this or watching this are uh, launching new products or new plants. So, what are some of the uh, great examples that y'all have seen that really have stood out in receiving... I know you get a lot of plants and a lot of products. Um, that come your way. So what are some ways that people have given you uh, new plants or products to review and to, uh, to consider for an article or a story placement that have really stood out as being great examples of ways to reach you? Well, I don't know if I can remember too many examples of specific ones that have really stood out, but the ones that, that don't stand out are the ones that come in with you know a tiny little promotional piece wrapped in tons of packaging, I think that for for a lot of editors, um, you know we're looking for to to make gardening green, and when we get this uh, tons of uh, packing peanuts surrounding a tiny little um, plastic thing, that's a real turnoff for any yep. type of product. So I think avoiding making putting things in too much packaging is a big part of of not annoying the editors. 
Yes. We, many years ago, we ran into that problem with packing the plastic, not the biodegradable, but the plastic packing peanuts, and it mm -hmm. was we got fussed at. Mm -hmm. Who has a bird in this crowd? <laughs> That's oh, not me. me. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are some big, um, examples of things to do? I mean, do you like to get uh, six of one plant or one of six different plants? Do you like to get a six pack? Do you like to get a quart? Do you like to get a gallon? Uh, you know, it's hard to say. I was just thinking about this and. One issue for us at Gardenista also is seasonality. Um, for instance, um, Katie sent along to me a bunch of bulbs, um, fall, spring bulbs to plant in the fall. And um, they're right now in my refrigerator. And I'm thinking I really want to do a piece about forcing bulbs mm -hmm. and use these bulbs and and see how well they do. The question is like the timing because for me it I have to I would I have to actually um, do the whole DIY, take photos of the process and then hopefully they'll sprout and then I can take photos of them blooming and then it'll be a post. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of a it's a long distance runner project sort of a thing. Um, and I, but I think that it's it's likely to to be a post and and if these bulbs actually sprout and do what they're supposed to do and look beautiful, then it'll be a post about bulbs from this company mm -hmm. and you know how well they work for for forcing. But it's just um it's a it's a little bit tricky for us because we feel like it's really important at Gardenista that we test and support and kind of stand behind um, the products that we, we put on the site. And yeah. um, so I don't know that it would be like, I could say I'd rather receive one of six plants or six of one plant. It kind of depends on the plant. Like last winter, I think I received um, one of those little tiny um, evergreen Christmas trees and North a pot. Alan pine. Yeah, and it was in a little red foil pot with a red bow, which is very much not our aesthetic. And what I ended up doing was taking this little tree out of the pot and out of the soil and putting it in a huge mason jar full of water where it looked oh, really wow. great and floating it. But then I thought, well, this, I can't. Then I was I couldn't really do a post about it because I kind of subverted the purpose of the seller. Do you know what I mean? Well, um, I think that from our point of view, to see how products are used in a variety of ways is important. So maybe for those that are pitching, it's here's how we see it, but what we're looking for really is what's your interpretation. So mm -hmm. to ask for that in a pitch might be, which we I don't know if we've ever thought of, to mm -hmm. ask for um, how have you interpreted this? Like what would you um, do with this? Yeah, how, yeah. what would you what would you do with this? If somebody sent it to you as a gift, for instance. Yes, if you received this uh, Norfolk Island pine in this red tin foil mm -hmm. and it doesn't fit your decor at all, here's what you can do to make it fit you and maybe it wasn't just putting it in a mason jar of water which I would never have thought of it mm -hmm. might have been moving that into a uh, aluminum uh, you know a, a, a pot or a birch basket or mm -hmm. or putting it cl clumping a few of them together with some moss around them and I guess the reason I didn't do that was because I was thinking well maybe that's an, an, an insult to your client and just because you sent me a plant I can't use doesn't mean I want to insult your client. Do you know what I mean? I do. Um, but using it in any way that's positive is is kind of what, from a PR point, we're looking for. Okay. So what have, have, have y'all seen any other great uh, product uh, programs that have really knocked your socks off? Um, I think that a few years ago, and I guess they're still doing it, the Endless Summer Hydrangea, the, the whole marketing scheme for that was, was pretty amazing, and I think they did a great job 
introducing that, starting with the editors and, and garden magazines and then bringing it to the public, but just a very creative marketing campaign on that. Good. Well, thank you, David. We were involved in that. So, um, whether I didn't know if you knew that. No, I didn't. Um, so, let's see. Let's go on to um, our third question is, um, what are the three reasons that you do not open an email or do not accept a submission? I, I certainly heard one of them was it's totally off base and off target. Mm -hmm. You know what seems to be really irritating to me is when I get a pitch and um, it's all text but there's no link to the website or link to the mm. product at all. And I like to take a deep dive. I stalk people online, especially if they're pitching me a product. I want to see what is so neat about this, what's cool. Does this company really have um, their stuff together for us to promote their product? Um, so if I get a pitch and there's no link out to the website, if I have to go searching for this, copy-pasting it into my browser, it makes it a little harder for me to get motivated to do so. Right. right. So and what if there's a, dis what if there's a dis disconnect, what? disconnect between, between the pitch, pitch and and what you think and what it is, you think and then, it when, you is, and the then when you go to the website, what, no. what does that do what, to you? What does that do to you? Um, it has to be really cool for me to follow beyond that. Um, if it's, I'm just, I'm trying to think of the last couple of pitches that I got and um, why I didn't go through. You know, a lot of it uh, comes down to your personality too, and. Um, I think there's it's a hard sales line. It's been a hard sales some pitch. I'm sorry, I'm not articulating very well. Uh, people are selling really hard, and it's a cold pitch. And I think they need to bring back that personality. And um, gosh, all in my mind, I keep on going back to the pitches I get from Garden Media Group, and they're so personable, and they're short, and they're friendly. I mean, gosh, if you guys can get on their pitch line, <laughs> you can see how they do it. That's that's a model to follow. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So, what are some of the things that you look for in a story submission? So, you're looking for relevance to your publication and for it to be personal. Do you want um, experts? Do you want them to have uh, to tell you the story to begin with? Do you want it to start out with the story or do you just want the facts? Well, we're looking for our magazine at least. We're looking for people who are, you know, have some level of authority in whatever they're going to write about to start with, but also someone who can uh, interview other experts and bring their um, broader experience into the story. So they've got to be both an an expert to some degree and also a good journalist. Or do you want them, uh, what about David, if they are uh, like us, not the expert, but the expert in the public relations area, do you want them to provide you with a list of people that you could talk to? Yes, that's helpful for any, okay. anything you have right. experts behind. And, and do you want images in the pitch? Um, yeah, as long as it doesn't uh, clog up the, the email. That's the only issue. So links, maybe one image and a link to other images. All right, and do you do y'all want attachments or do you want the, whatever the story is embedded right into the email? Attachment. 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 Because I can't uh, always grab something out of the text of an email, depending on what computer I'm on. Okay, that's interesting. All right, so um, to get to our last question of the day. You know, once we've made uh, friends and once uh, you have come to trust the, uh, the source, how does someone continue to develop uh, a relationship with you and continue to, you know, show and feel the love? Um, well, I think a really good example is what Katie did, um, for instance, Liking Gardenies on, on Facebook, checking in there, following us, um, making comments on Facebook, or retweeting or repinning our imagery. It, just, it, it reinforces the idea that she's very familiar with our website and our aesthetics and the kinds of topics we are going to and what might be new to us. 
So you actually see Michelle when um, someone is following you. You certainly see when you've been, you've been retweeted or someone has liked something on Facebook. And well, you know okay. Because we're an online publication, a really big part of our day is kind of um, managing our social media accounts and seeing how much um, traffic and leadership um, those social media accounts are generating. And so we we monitor it all day long, and we get alerts. You know, somebody just commented on this list. Photo or status up there. Or somebody just retweeted this post. We see traffic tracking on a particular post that's on our site. We quickly go to chart and look to see like what prompted that spike. What did a bunch did somebody tweet it? Suddenly in the last hour, this particular link. You know, and we're always trying to investigate that because fine tuning. Um, uh, our social our media, social media and, and where our traffic where comes, our from comes from is, is a big part a big of part our of our So Katie, so Katie from, from BH and G is so much bigger. Were you able to? Are you able to track and, and follow the same kind of engagement? I don't have a direct direct connection to the social, but um, we have. Uh, workhorse of an analyst analytic system behind our website um, that's sometimes overwhelming to try to trap into but uh, specifically when we use blog posts I will track um, how we've used those sorry I got off the tangent how we use those in a newsletter how we use those in social promotion yes um, we sorry my mind went down another channel there I was thinking of that's okay uh, that's okay Susie, I'm sorry, ask me that question again. <laughs> well, the, the big question the big is, question how, do is how do people continue, continue to build the relationship, relationship with media? And how do they continue, do they continue to, to feel that love that and show love that love? That's, love. The, big That's the big question. You know, I think Michelle hit on it. It's the social interaction. I think that does well. It uh, makes us feel good when, when we're partnering with somebody that um, – is so aware of what else is going on in the social that they can retweet and reshare the stuff that we promote um, that they've directly had a hand in. Um, that makes that makes me feel really good that they're paying attention in that respect. Right. And if I can take it too. We don't use social media uh, with our magazine quite as much yet as probably um, <clears throat> um, some of the other magazines. But uh, for me, for authors who want to you know keep in touch. Uh, it's good to always touch base with the editor a couple times a year, sending you know a couple of pitches or sending in news current information about something going on in their region that might be of interest. Uh, trying to work a pitch around um, current events that might be really timely. Um, I think it's just keeping that gentle touch two or three times a year is key. Whether you have uh, something specific for them or not, correct? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, one last question is, what advice specifically for each of your publications would you say uh, people need to, to know about in order to um, get, get submissions? Um, for us at Gardenista, um, I would say two things. One, that our website is very driven by imagery. Um, beautiful photos. Um, every, every post we do, um, the imagery conveys a narrative as well as the text. Um, so that's one thing. If it's not beautiful photos, and by beautiful I mean photos that happen to fit our aesthetic, which you could become familiar with by looking at the site, um, we're just not going to run them, and we right. may not run the story. And then number two is our aesthetic is, um, because we are a sister publication with Remodelista, we're very much about clean, modern, useful, high quality tools, ideas, designs, DIYs. Um, um, that's our aesthetic. Good. That's a good tip. Thank you, Michelle. David? Uh, I think, again, for us, it's really making sure that they've read read the magazine and understand our audience because we 
um, are sort of reaching to gardeners who have a fairly strong base of experience. Yes. If they get a pitch that's you know aimed at a basic you know beginning gardening audience, that's it goes right into the delete bin immediately. Yep, uh, immediately. That's what we don't want. And how about you, Katie? Well, I might be a little different than David and Michelle. We will take a more general pitch because yeah. our audience is much broader and we have a lot of starter gardeners, so some of the basic gardening tips work well for us. Um, we don't showcase, we try not, while we like the high-end houses and landscaping, we don't always showcase those because our general reader can't always take cues from the higher end and apply those to their own landscaping, so it's probably a little more mainstream mm -hmm. that we like to, uh, that we try to appeal to. Also, I'd suggest on our timeline, um, Michelle touched on this a little bit as well. Um, while online we can move quicker to put a story out, um, our publication needs to work at least 6 to 12 months in advance, and in some instances 18 months. 18. So keep that in mind when you're pitching us. So like this last week, I got a pitch about winterizing your garden, and we've already touched on that, and that's been in the bucket for two months now. Yep. 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 That was, that's that's certainly one of the things about thing gardening. That gardening. You have to you plant have to those seeds well in advance before you can harvest the story. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, y'all, it well, has been a great better. day, a great Halloween treat to have you three uh, wizards on our panel today. Uh, thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Katie. And thank you, David. Um, we've really dipped into a big bowl of Halloween candy and have come up with, I think, some great tricks or treats for our listeners. Uh, there are a lot of questions I know that we didn't cover. Uh, and we have a, a great ebook on media relations that I would strongly recommend that you download if you haven't already done that. And if you check out our Grow blog, we'll be answering some of these questions online. So thank you all. Here from uh, the Garden Media Group, this is Susie McCoy. Appreciate you hanging out with us today, and I wish you a happy Halloween. Thanks. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.